So, um, I'm Lisa O'Regan, I'm e-learning development officer at Maynooth University and I'm the lead for the Y1 Feedback Project. Um, the long title is Supporting Transition, Enhancing Feedback and Firstly Using Digital Technologies. So, uh, this is a collaborative project uh, between Maynooth University, AIT, DCU and Dundalk and I'm here representing everybody today. Okay, so at a high level, what is this project? Well, first of all, it's a two-year project, so we're about halfway through. It's a regional cluster partnership, so it's a, a common issue which we are addressing to, together. <laughs> um, it intersects both the national forum themes in terms of both teaching for transitions and assessment um, as, as and for learning. Um, I suppose, so what does this project do or what will it do? Well, first and foremost, it focuses on feedback and first year, okay? with a specific um, emphasis around feedback um, in supporting transition. And this is our core differentiator. Uh, another unique aspect to this is that we are, um, we are very strongly evidence-based and we've done a lot of work to look at what's happening and to look at ha what's happening elsewhere, and that is informing um, our project. So, why feedback and why first year? Well, First and foremost, we know that feedback is really important for learning, okay? And we know that regular feedback and uh, feedback for first years in particular can help them transition and that they're more likely to stay on. Um, what we also know is, is that, um, as I said, feedback is important, but we know that feedback is, um, how would you say, a global concern, okay? In, in um, studies across Australia, the UK, and Ireland indeed, we've seen that there is dissatisfaction around feedback, and that's also the case in Ireland. And this project addresses that concern. So for example, the uh, ISI survey, the Irish Survey of Student Engagement 214 and 213, showed that first year undergrad students said that they never or only sometimes receive timely feedback on written work, okay? So we want to look at this, okay? Not, uh, and to look at why and to see how we can improve it or look at ways that, or approaches that can help this. Okay, so the project. What have we been doing in 215? So first and foremost, we set up the project. Uh, then we looked at what's happening on the ground. We looked at, okay, how uh, is feedback being uh, given across the four institutions or what's happening in relation to feedback? And we also look, asked students, okay, what is your feedback experience in first year? So we got a, a sense of what's happening. Then um, we also looked at the literature in the area, okay? So we looked at a number of areas around feedback, we looked at approaches, we looked at first year and the transition piece, taking on feedback from the panel, and we also looked at the technologies. How is technology being used for feedback, okay? Then we moved on and we looked at, okay, once we'd identified um, a number of approaches, we started um, identifying partners to work with to, um, to pilot these, um, these approaches. Um, then we moved on to plan these case studies with academic partners, and we've also been looking at some dissemination throughout. So that is a snapshot. I'm going to go into some of these in a little bit more detail. Okay, so first of all, um, how we work together. In any collaborative report, uh, project, it's important to set a firm, a firm foundation in front of the team. As you can see, uh, we have regular meetings, uh, face-to-faces and email contact, and this is us in Maynooth. Uh, we do need to invest in a selfie stick, I admit, uh, but we tried. Um, maybe the, the budget will stretch to it. Um, okay, so first and foremost, I said we did a study and we looked at how feedback is happening. This is uh, the publication, Feedback in First Year Landscape Snapshot, and at the moment it's with the designer, it's in the final stages, unfortunately we don't have today. This is the staff of the sense of the work being done. Um, so, basically what we did, we looked at um, what is the staff experience, we looked at um, how feedback is given, what technologies are used, um, and we uh, asked staff about the challenges they face and the approaches they recommend. Um, we also looked at the student experience, um, how they receive feedback, their attitudes to feedback, and their recommendations for, for change as well. And we've summarized this. So this document, as I say, is about to be published and we will update uh, our website with this when it is uh, complete. We expect this to be available within the next two weeks. As I say, it's in the, in the final stages. 
So that is our first uh, piece of work. Uh, just to give you a very quick idea of what we found um, at a very high level that both staff and students a shared appreciation of the value of feedback for learning. This came through very strongly. Um, what also came through is that the students' experience of feedback in first year is inconsistent. Okay, um, and that's just a little quote that you can uh, that you can read that demonstrates that. And this came through quite uh, quite strongly. Um, in general, there is dissatisfaction around timing, quantity, and quality of feedback. But that is from both a staff and a student perspective. There are frustrations on the staff side, and the students uh, acknowledge this. That is not to say that they're not amazing example of feedback uh, practice and amazing accounts, and these can be seen in the, um, in the snapshot uh, document when we publish it. Um, there is a strong perception among staff that students only value the grade. Um, interestingly, students came out very strongly the other way. They want, uh, they want the grade, but they also want feedback, um, and they want uh, more than brief comments. Um, shared value for feedback conversations. This came through very strongly when we asked their favourite uh, mode of feedback. It was written, but written with um, a chance to discuss. This came through very strongly. Um, overall, we found that there was a low use of peer involvement in feedback um, from um, this, the people and participants involved. And we also found that there was limited use of technology-supported feedback approaches. Um, <coughs> What I, I would say here is that there were examples and very individual examples within that, but overall, this was the picture. Um, the key challenges for staff that came up were time, workload, and large class sizes. Probably no major surprises there, um, but significant challenges nonetheless. Um, key suggestions. We asked students, you know, how would they change, if they could change the first year experience in terms of feedback, they would like more consistency, more feedback, and quicker feedback, okay? But consistency was number one. So, uh, this just gives you a sense. We're going to take, we've taken this data and we're embedding this within into our, into our uh, pilots um, and, and how we're approaching those case studies. Okay, um, next what we did is we looked at the literature. Um, we, um, we looked at a number of areas. Um, we looked at the first year, the transition piece and how feedback plays a role there. We looked at feedback, contemporary um, literature on feedback. Uh, we looked at approaches, and we also looked at feedback and technology. And from that, we distilled a number of uh, key things. First and foremost, we were able to identify a set of features of effective feedback for first year. And this again comes back to a core differentiator for our project. We are looking particularly at first year, and we've been able to identify these. I would say these, uh, that these have been identified with help from the literature. We will try and embed these within our pilots and cases, and come the end of the project, they may look a little different, but this is our first goal. So promoting feedback within and beyond assessed work, again, it's about inside the classroom, outside the classroom, not just about the summative or the continuous assessment. Um, that for first years, it's really important to embed the assessment and feedback, uh, assessment and feedback literacies. You know, students always don't understand what they are receiving. Maybe feedback or see a conversation as feedback, but also about setting expectations. This has come through very clearly in the literature. Um, fostering student competence, motivation, mo and belonging. This comes in around peer involvement and feedback, and very important for first year to, to support transition. Um, providing opportunities for dialogic feedback. This is a core, I suppose, um, theme running through uh, our work that we are looking at dialogic um, approaches um, to feedback as well as sustainable approaches to feedback. Um, we're also going to be looking at, um, we also feel that it's important that you embed the digital literacies, um, especially where technology is involved. And um, I suppose one key feature to effective feedback in first year is about consistent and coordinated approaches to feedback, so programmatic approaches. So these are what we have identified as key features to date, and I mentioned sustainable already. Okay, so these are just very quickly some approaches we've identified and some of them which we will be um, piloting and casing. This is not an exhaustive list. They're not set out that you might use them um, individually or you might, or, but you would use them as a group. You wouldn't just use one or the other, um, but you could, but it's a reset. Okay, 
Right, okay, so another key aspect of the project, so we have the features, we have the approaches, and again, we're looking at how we can leverage the potential of technologies. So within our cases, we will be looking at, is it possible to give more feedback, timely feedback, provision to large group is a key challenge for us, a variety of feedback, uh, again, the dialogic feedback, um, and flexible um, access to feedback online. Um, as well as the potential for added dimensions to feedback. So there's a lot there. Each case won't be able to look at all of them, but over across the spread, we hope to be able to look at a number of these um, areas. Okay, so as I said, we have looked at what's happening on the ground, we've looked at the literature, and we have, begun, we have taken key approaches and features and begun planning cases. So project teams across the four uh, partners have begun um, developing uh, these. Um, we uh, are working with uh, departments in, a par um, in partnership with departments. And uh, how we did that was we uh, held information ses uh, sessions and participation was invited. Um, and there was also a lot of work um, you know, that we were aware of, so we were able to touch base with people there as well. We are taking a design-based research, research approach to the approaches. Um, so pilots, um, some of them are on, are, have started already, and they, may, uh, uh, they will go through an iterative process between semester two and semester one next, uh, next term. Some may only go one semester, but some may need to go two. Um, in total, we have 26 case studies already in progress. At the outset, we agreed uh, four per, um, per institution, and there has been a lot of enthusiasm within the institutes, and we are, we are currently at 26. Um, that may no that, of course, that number may drop, or that, may, that number may increase by the end of the project. Uh, that, that, that's the way these things go. So um, we, uh, I'm not set on that number, so to speak. Um, at the moment, we have 16 academic departments involved, so there's a great spread in disciplines from nursing, in, in um, engineering, business, French, um, there are loads more, social care, and uh, in total we are working with 32 academic partners, so um, there is a, this is outside the project team alone, so there are huge numbers involved and already um, involved in this work. And of course students as well are involved as active partners in the pilots, where there are pilots um, going on, um, they are aware of the pilots and we will be looking for feedback throughout um, the, the pilots as well. Okay, so I am not going to go through all these, but I really wanted to show you uh, or to give you a sense of the breadth of uh, work being done and the type of pilots that we are uh, engaging with and the types of approaches we are trialling. Um, so you can see here, um, actually the first one there, we've linked up with the previous presentation and we were looking with working on a case study with UniDoodle and feedback approaches on UniDoodle. So we have linked up with uh, Seamus and Christine there. Um, other ones you can see, we're looking at video for some sort of assessment, we're looking at um, a number of ours focus on in-class and um, uh, in-class strategies um, for feedback. Um, you can see here the AIT pilots in progress, there are a number of uh, pilots ongoing here and um, for example the clickers for dialogic formative feedback in the large humanities classroom is just one. You can see there's a screencasting e-portfolios and Moodle as well as some of the technologies but a variety of approaches being used as well. Um, here again, you can see that Peer is featuring um, in some of our cases. Peer came out very strongly in our uh, research as a key method of bringing students into feedback and uh, bringing them into the discipline and developing their self-regulatory learning skills. Um, okay, so there's just a snapshot. Uh, again, we have a number of cases here, um, another key approach that came out through the literature was the, um, especially for first year, was multi-stage assignments um, and that ability or to give the students the opportunity to get feedback as they go through a written piece of work, both from the teacher but also from peers. And there's a no, um, there are some cases here on that. One case here as well is how we are, we are also looking at cases involving students and motivating use of feedback. Um, so the first case one is the prize for the best prize, our best uh, prize for the best use of feedback. 
Um, national impact, okay, so I'll go through this quickly. I think I must be running out of time. Um, national impact, well, I suppose first and foremost, we're halfway through and we're starting at local, regional, and we will move towards national impact. Um, I was going to say, we do have a website, and as our publications come through, we will be putting them up, so we would hope that these will be available in the next two weeks. Um, dissemination, we have already begun dissemination. We um, shared our findings from the um, landscape snapshot um, at EdTech 215. We also shared some of these findings at the Assessment Higher Education Conference in the UK, and we also won the best research poster award at that conference. And uh, that was no mean feat. It was presentation. There were 60 in the running. Um, so uh, we're very proud of that. And there's the team uh, who presented. Um, we also presented at the ATU. Um, this year, we've just recently been accepted to CEDA 216. They have a spring conference on um, assessment and feedback. So we'll be sharing uh, our, our findings so far there. And we'll also be looking for feedback on the approaches there. So that should be really good. Um, we have a number of staff development initiatives going on. For example, Feedback Fridays, where you can look at... Um, we're participating in the work, What Works and Why um, initiative across um, the partner institutes. Um, we will have case study reports at the end, however, we're only really kind of starting out on those and our big national dissemination will be at 217, um, our national symposium on feedback. So, last question, how have we evolved? Okay, so I guess taking on board um, the feedback from the panel and also, I suppose, marking our, our own learning journey through the project, there have been a number of changes or changes in focus. Okay, so um, I'm going to take one minute to, to show you these. I think they're important. So first and foremost, I suppose when we did start out, we were very much focused on the technology-based approaches. And even though we would think pedagogy over technology, we were thinking maybe more audio or video. And that our thinking has really progressed in that. And really, we're now focused on dialogic and sustainable feed, um, feedback approaches for first year. Um, so this is largely informed by, the, by our work. Um, and technology enabled where appropriate. Um, I suppose as well, at the start, we were more focused on assessment feedback. We were looking a lot at continuous assessment, and that has broadened to all learning, interac learning interactions. A lot of our cases are looking at in-class methods, real-time feedback, automated feedback. I suppose initially, while we were looking at teacher and peer, we have become more peer-focused, and that is... Um, that will be seen through a lot of the cases which embed peer, even if they're not using technology, that a lot of the approaches are, are taking in peer. Um, as well as the start, we probably thought more in terms of a single case or a single approach that might be used in a pilot. However, that has developed, and I suppose that has really developed in our conversations with staff and in those partnerships. We're looking more holistically at a module, at the assessment and feedback, and looking at multi-approaches. So that is it. <laughs> Apologies for going a little bit over. Great job. Uh,